Oh, there's a missing... I see. Uh, that thing stasis is my gun. SCVs, evacuate the command center. That whole area is going down. Can we like take this out before it runs away from me? Maybe. That may or may not work. Uh, no, come on. Come back, come back. Okay, got it, got it. Except these guys are here. Um... We require more Vespian gas. Zerglings. Apparently I can't afford anything else. Aemon shall be. Alright, well, coming back this way. My destiny manifests. This is... this is pretty good. I am... quite... impressed by this mission and how challenging it is. Um, my things are being eaten over here. Let me teleport. No, don't do that. Extract the... Alright, you guys come back. And when you guys attack this thing. Okay, there's a void. Void crystal there. What are they called? Rampage Construct. Alright, void crystal there. Let's go for it. I'm gonna intercept this one. Continue building queens. Continue building queens. Time for some Hydralisks. And Hydralisk and Zerglings. Ah, uh, those guys are having a bad time. I'm gonna attack this thing though. This is not working well for us, but I think we're gonna make it. Queens and more Hydralisks. More Hydralisks. Alright, 4 out of 7. Will for this. 4 out of 7, guys. I don't know where the other 3 is. Alright, let's hang out here and um, continue and get some roaches, get some roaches. Wow, this mission is pretty exciting. So we've cleared out a lot of the enemy. All we need to do now... Just wait for them to appear, alright. So here comes the Void Crystal, and we're gonna go for it. Amon is preparing to strike my Nexus. Be wary, Kerrigan. Your Hive Cluster is next. Uh, if you say so, why can't I get a Hive? Oh, because I have Queens coming. Alright, Hive. Actually, the Terrans have this under control, it looks like. I didn't even need to do this. Alright, five. Do you feel that? 
Your hand approaches. Five out of seven. Although he did eat some of my units again. So let's just spam that back up. Ah, we're winning. Look at that. We're winning, except that he keeps eating our bases. So once I get that to a hive... Let me just upgrade the other one to a hive as well, because we're going to lose this one pretty soon. Let me move these guys over here. Alright, so we've got that, and then we're going to upgrade. While we wait for... The crystal is still up here. Where is it going? Oh really? It's going up there? I can't reach it from here. Crap, I don't have any air units. Um, okay, that kind of sucks. That kind of sucks. We don't have any air units to reach that. And the other guys aren't really going for it, neither. Hmm. So I I think I see some enemies coming this way. Alright, they're gonna queue that up, queue that up. Alright, the other one is coming this way, so we can take out that one. Let me just intercept these enemies here. And then we'll come over here and intercept the other crystal. And I might think about building some air units. Why are you guys stuck? Oh, Alright, there's a oh, too many ultralisks. The ultralisks are getting stuck on themselves. Ah, uh, can you guys deal with that, please? Void Crystal 5 out of 7. Okay, I think my allies can deal with that one, and I'm gonna deal with this one. And then we'll be okay. I think. Supply my limit reached. Manifest. I cannot delay. So, is that gonna work? That's probably gonna work. Which way is that thing going? It's coming this side, isn't it? Look at this guy though. Hey, look at him. Hemon. Giant tentacle monster. Alright, got... I'm gonna take care of that one. Well, I'm here to murder you, Amon. So I think it's... I don't think that's a problem. That I'm a murderer? Oh, we're done? Punch him in the face. Oh, frame rates are terrible. No. I choose something different. I choose freedom. For all of us. You choose no clothing. Why is she a naked burning woman? Oh no, the frame rates are terrible. What a yeah, now the screen's just black. 
Jim Rayner was never heard from again. His badge was recovered from Joey Ray's bar on Marsara. Okay. Under the steady leadership of Emperor Valerian Max and Admiral Matthew Horner, the Dominion enters an age of prosperity and peace. Well, good for them. Led by the new Queen Zagara, the Zerg forcibly lay claim to the systems surrounding Char. <laughs> well, it's good to have a homeworld and some surrounding systems. High Lord Alarak declines an alliance with the unified Protoss and his people leave Aya to establish their own homeworld. Any Teldarim who oppose his decision are permitted one opportunity to join the Templar. Okay. Scientists have reported a strange regrowth of life on formerly barren planets across the Cthulhu sector. The origin of these vast changes is unknown. That is... That's a pretty rough painting there. Okay, I wanna... Can we see that cutscene again? Before, okay, let me just escape out of this. Um, into the void epilogue completed master archives. I just want to see that cutscene again if possible. Homecoming. Okay, right, let's play this again because that was terrible. I think that might be a euphemism of him committing suicide. I think either he drank himself to death or he committed suicide. That's possible. Or or the Selnaga Kerrigan just came back and, and took him somewhere. Who knows? Who knows what that means? Um, yay, happy endings for everyone. Um alright, let's let's be honest. I'm, let's just have some honest talking time. I think the Protoss campaign was not as high quality as the Terran or the Zerg campaign. I've said it already, I think they had... They, they wanted this big epic finale and I don't think they did it. The story 
I mean, it it it, it would the story potentially could be an a, a big epic finale. The missions just didn't seem as well crafted as the other two. And you know, I'm not saying Blizzard is bad. I'm just I'm just saying Blizzard didn't seem to manage to do as good of a job as they did in um in the first two campaigns, like in the Terran and the and the, and the Zerg campaigns. It's like they had this really grand idea and they didn't quite they didn't quite hit it right. They didn't quite make all of it properly. A lot of the story were kind of there were a lot of threads and, and the and the connections between them were kind of flimsy. And a lot of it felt like oh you just make make things up. You just make things up and then things happen. And um I don't know, maybe it's the nature of Amon and, and the Protoss. I don't I don't think it should be. I don't know. I don't know. I mean it is fun. It's plenty entertaining, and I suppose if I played it on a high difficulty it'd be even more entertaining. So I'm not saying it's bad, I'm just saying it's not as perfect, you know, as the other Blizzard games that you that you're used to playing. Um Hmm. It's a little bit of a shame, but you know, it's not. This is not the first game that doesn't close properly. That doesn't end properly. <laughs> there are plenty of games that don't end properly, and uh, I mean, the, and in comparison to some of the other ones, it ends okay. Like it, it ends pretty decently. It's not a complete disaster like some other games. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, I don't know. It I, it doesn't. It seems like they tried to have the great epic finale, and they have some pieces of that in place, but it's not all there. Oh well. Oh well, whatever. Doesn't matter too much in the end. I wonder if there's going to be a StarCraft 3. If there is, they're going to have to find new characters, because they just killed Raynor and Kerrigan. They're going to have to find new people. Alright, I don't have much to say aside from that. It's pretty good. I mean, I, I say it's not as good, but it's, it's still a very good game. You know, it's a very good game. And Blizzard makes very good games. It's just not quite as good as the other two parts of StarCraft 2, <laughs> which are exceptionally good. <laughs> it's, uh. Maybe, maybe the. Maybe it's. Maybe the parts that don't fit in stick out more than they should. Like, you know, sometimes a, a, a game or anything, sometimes a thing can be like 95% good and 5% bad. And the 5% that's bad like sticks out. And so you, you get a bad impression of it when in fact it's actually 95% good, which is, you know, pretty good. <laughs> so that's probably it. In fact, that's probably it. Maybe I should have played this on a higher difficulty, I don't know. Although having said that, if I played the epilogue on hard difficulty, I would have failed multiple times on a lot of the missions, so... It's weird, it's weird, like they made the whole Protoss campaign a little too easy, and, they didn't, they, and then they made the epilogue, and they turned up the difficulty again. I, I guess it really is just the, just the factions. The factions and the Spear of a Dune powers I just chose all the most overpowered bits. Maybe if you took that away from me, then the whole campaign would be the right difficulty. Because the epilogue was the right difficulty, and and you'd think it's Blizzard making all these things that they would be at least consistent within their own game. And the only difference really is that I didn't have the Spear of a Dune, and I didn't get to choose my own factions for the Protoss. And that made the epilogue significantly more difficult than the than the main campaign. Maybe that's all it is. I wonder if, if there are justice. Blizzard, I mean, for the multiplayer at least, I know Blizzard's going to keep patching the game and keep adjusting the units to uh, make sure that the multiplayer experience is good. Like, they'll keep making sure that uh, the units and, and the races are balanced. I don't know if they'll rebalance the campaign at some point in the future. Maybe they should. 
maybe they should rebalance the spear of a dude. Maybe if the reinforcement and the free pylons were a little further apart, like if they cost more energy, so that you can't use them as much, and you know, maybe if they kind of balance the powers out there, then it would make a difference. Like like the the um, the the factions for the units. Not all of them are tactically useful, or rather, what I'm trying to say is, for example, for the flyers, you can either have carrier or mothership or tempest, and they're three very different ships. I mean, they let you choose one of the three because they're they're all quite powerful, right? And so you don't want to be overpowered having all three of them. But they're all very different, and depending on your play style, you can get a lot of benefit out of one and not the other if you don't play the way the unit requires you to, or if you're just not good the way I'm not good at the game. So you just kind of choose the one that's most useful. And and for the other ones too, like the factions actually kind of give you some. They give you different benefits. Like maybe if you had to choose one faction for all your units, it wouldn't really make sense in terms of the story. It wouldn't make sense in terms of the gameplay. But but I just picked them. I just kind of picked the best ones for me from each one, and it just made me really overpowered. Like if you kind of didn't let me do that, I would be struggling a lot more because then the units wouldn't be my style. And yeah, yeah, some of that stuff just made it overpowered. Maybe when they tested the game, they didn't really. Focus on that part too much, and it is the case that if I chose different faction and, and different spear of a doom powers, it would be a very different experience. The campaign, huh? Huh? I wonder about that. Well, it's too late now. We finished the campaign. We finished the whole game, in fact. So there you go. There's my playthrough of StarCraft Two. Overall, a very good game. And if Blizzard ever comes back to rebalance the campaign. Then it would be pretty close to perfect, I think. Although some of the plot points are still a bit silly, but that's fine. I can deal with that. If the missions are fun, I can deal with anything else. All right, I guess I'll end it here. Stop talking, wasting your time. I'll see you in future games. Maybe I should try multiplayer and like get owned by people. <laughs>